Welcome to the Bookman's Corner. I'm Lois Lindstrom. We are very pleased to welcome former Arlington resident Norton Beckerman, who has written a book about the brain and about brain function in an effort to understand and cure his own cognitive problems. So nice to have you here, Norton. Thank you. It's great to be here. Our viewers should know that your book, A User's Guide to a Healthy Brain, helps the reader understand how the brain functions and how to keep it functioning effectively. Norton is not an MD, but through personal experience, he has learned a great deal about the brain. He uses mainstream science, and the information in his book is presented in a very unique way. Norton had a serious head injury as a child, and then as an adult had major memory problems, problems and lost his ability to speak, both important cognitive functions. His problems were considered to be incurable, but possibly manageable. They weren't manageable, so he began studying the brain to take to, to seek a cure for his own cognitive problems. This was 10 years ago. Today, he has not only cured his cognitive problems, he's exceeded and expanded his cognitive abilities. Well, briefly, Nort, tell us about the head injury you sustained as a child. I was playing with three of my friends, with two of my friends, and we were about 10 years old at the time. Uh, we were trying to play keep away, but we didn't have a ball. Okay. So one of us picked up a brick and we used a brick, and the idea was for the person in the middle to touch somebody with the brick, they would switch places. Sure. Well, I got close to my friend Humphrey, who had the brick, <laughs> and he decided to throw it at me and hit me right in the head. Uh, I was unconscious for a whole for a long period of time. Uh, well, how long? I was unconscious for at least 24 hours. They didn't really know if I was going to live. At least that's the story I'm told. And, and, and how old were you again? You were 8 years About old? About 10. 10, 10 years old. 9, 10 years old, Okay, yeah. and your parents must have been sickened by all this. I mean, just... Uh, they were just by your, you were, you were, they were standing by your bedside hoping you'd make it, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it not only, it, it not only terrified them, but it changed our whole relationship because now I was fragile. Yes, yes, yes. Did you have terrible headaches? Did you have... I basically had, I basically had seizures and I had, to, mm -hmm. I, had to, I had to watch what I did and when I did it. Uh, but you were going to school, right? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. I went to school... Mm -hmm. um, Memory was a problem. Reasoning was a problem for me because I was I was hit right in the front of the head. But um, eventually went through it. Went went to college. Went to went to graduate school. So you, so then uh, as you became an adult, you you were you married. You you moved to Arlington, Virginia, from Chicago, right? And, yes, correct. And then you started having big memory problems, right? Or did you became ill? Or I got I was ill. I had a virus that attacked my brain. Mm. And, uh, and how old were you then? Was this, how many years ago was this? This was in 89. 89. And okay. I'm not going to tell you how old oh, I was. Oh, yeah, then. don't tell don't, 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 don't. <laughs> But, but uh, uh, it attacked my brain. Uh, they told me that it wasn't life-threatening, but there'd be some collateral damage. Mm -hmm. And there mm -hmm. was. Uh, it cost me a good part of my short-term memory and most of my working memory. So I used to walk around with spiral notebooks writing everything down. <laughs> and so, and did you have terrible headaches? Did you... Uh, was it was it hard to sleep, um, or just mostly just memory just memory issues? Mostly memory issues, yeah. Mostly yeah. memory issues. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you you start you 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 had a hard time talking, right? You you lost your voice. Not in the way that people most people think of losing your voice with their mm -hmm. heart. I, I I was unable to talk. I <laughs> wow. I kept in one. And, you, damn me. and it just kept getting worse, and it took a while before. I mean, I had an operation so that they could look at it. I, 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 they thought it was allergies. But eventually they just said to me, I had an incurable nervous disorder emanating from my brain. And so then you realized, you know, and they were saying that you could manage this, but you, you realized you couldn't, you, you were getting sick of this, right? They said I could probably manage it, but the way they suggested made things worse and I just decided I had a, yeah, I was scared. Yeah, and your quality of life was really going downhill. Oh, right? oh, major. Yeah. My friends enjoyed it because I couldn't talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so then you really started reading uh, lots of books and articles about the brain. Oh, I did. I took, I took courses, on, on neuroscience courses. I took a course, an online course with Miriam Diamond, a major neuroscientist. Uh, I read everything I could get hold of. The, the, the one thing that was really important to me, though, was uh, 
the notes from an academic conference on the latest changes in brain science. Mm. And at that point, I realized there was a major happening. Things were changing. And that, uh, yeah, I could, I could learn to talk again. Yes, and, and you now are sitting here talking beautifully. I think it's fantastic what, well, what, you, what you've been through. Um, well, yeah, well, this is it. Our, our, our understanding of the brain has totally changed since the late 1990s. Is it well, better tests, better, better the, drugs? No, 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 no. It's a better understanding of the role that the brain plays in, in, in our lives okay? Okay. And, and who we are. Uh, it was ultimately proven in the late 1990s and accepted that, that we can, can, and that's the operative word, generate experience-dependent brain cells throughout life. And then the issue was, does brain plasticity or neuroplasticity apply throughout life? And it was ultimately decided that, yes, it does. Now, what is that? What is neuroplasticity? Neuroplasticity, your brain is continually changing in response to what you do and don't do. Okay. Your brain is not a genetic inheritance that you have to make the best of. So it, it can be improved. Oh, yeah, sure. And, and, you, and you, can, you can have more brain cells. I mean, the, the brain cells that you start off with... Uh, you can can disappear and you can get new brain cells, right? Well, they don't really disappear, but yeah, you can continue to generate new brain cells. Yeah, I mean, if you do the things, in, it's a lifestyle program, and if you do the right things, yeah. You you, you'll get more brain cells, fantastic. Well, um, I like the fact that you share your data regarding the brain that you found on the internet and through all these books. I mean, what facts surprised you most about your research? the role that brain plasticity plays in, in everyday life. Um, I, I, we grow up, we think that our brain is a fixed genetic inheritance, like, like everything else about us, mm -hmm. and it's not. It's not. What, what, what brain plasticity does is it controls what's going on in the internal structure of your brain. It controls how the brain communicates. The primary resource of your brain is blood and brain plasticity controls how that blood is used. From reading your book, I think your, your message seems to be that to have a healthy brain, you need to avoid sugar, limit fat, limit carbs, and be active. I mean, do you care to elaborate on this? Well, I mean, you, you, yeah, you, you can say that, that lifestyle is, is very, very important. Critical, to have, yeah. It's critical to have a healthy brain. Uh, inflammation is probably the one thing that has caused our, our major problems as we get older. Um, and, and, can, and how can we uh, reduce the inflammation? Well, diet is, is, is incredibly important, but okay. you talked about generating new brain cells. In order to generate new brain cells, you need to exercise. Exercise. You need to move, yes. yes. You, yeah, you, need, you know, walking for older people, walking is a great, but you need to be physically active in some way. Every day? You need to be physically yeah, active yeah, every day? Yeah, okay. every day. You need to be physically active. That generates a growth hormone, but then you have to be exposed to things that require new cells, mm. you know, and then, and then those cells have to be stored someplace in your memory. Okay. Well, so that means that you need to be uh, learning new things, right? In Correct. other words, you can't just say, I've learned everything and I, I don't need to read another book, right? <laughs> well, then your brain stops drawing blood. Your, your brain stops functioning, basically, really. Basically. Well, yeah. Your, your, your brain will stop drawing blood to the areas that it once, it, it once was using. Mm, mm, mm. Well, how, what about hydration? I mean, you, are you talking about... Well, you hydration need, is critical. You have to be drinking water. Oh, yeah, it, it, hydration is just critical to everything. Hydration is what makes your, your, your cells work, your cells and your brain function. Uh, it also protects the brain and your skull. So, so how, about, well, how, how about you personally? How many, how many glasses of water do you drink per day? It's not just about drinking water. It's, okay. a, it's, it's also about the foods you eat. For example, you get a lot of water from fruits and vegetables. Sure, sure, sure. And um, water is my drink of choice. That's okay. what I drink. I okay. mean, you know. Okay, so, and so you avoid alcohol. Do you avoid alcohol? I avoid alcohol, yes. Okay, okay. I avoid alcohol. I avoid soft drinks, yes. Okay, and, and high sugar things. Now, do you think emotional grief impacts the brain health? Emo when people get very stressed and are emotionally upset... Stress is a killer. Stress is a killer. Anxiety, stress, chronic stress is. Uh, Short-term stress is actually good for the brain. Really? But chronic, yeah, but chronic stress puts the brain into, a, into an attack mode, and, and the, 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 the stress hormones in the brain start to, start to create damage, and they start to create inflammation. That's one of the major causes of inflammation in the brain.
Really? The stress, yeah. the stress. Yeah. And so people really need to manage their stress then. Yes. Oh, it's incredibly important. And so what, what do you recommend that they do? Someone, should they be visiting an analyst? Should they be meditating? Should they be... <laughs> what, what? Well, first of all, first of all, they, they, they need to understand what their stressors are. Okay. That's the first thing. Exercise is an incredible way to, to help relieve stress. Okay. Um, meditation. I meditate mm -hmm. daily. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to sit and meditate for an hour at a time. You can meditate for 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. a couple of times a day. But meditation relaxes the brain. It's, it's basically called the relaxation response. So you basically be, you become silent and you focus on, th on thoughts. And... You focus on a fixed, something fixed. Okay. You want to be in a quiet environment. Mm -hmm. You want you, you want to have your 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 vision focused on something fixed, mm -hmm. and you don't you don't want to be moving around. Okay. Basically, you don't want your brain impacted by a lot of extraneous activity. Yeah, I mean, things going on. Well, um, it's, it's 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 amazing to me that you can actually grow new brain brain cells. I mean, this is now documented and 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 it's, it's accepted, accepted. Yes. Accepted. Accepted. And then, and also, you know, there's a huge amount of medical information transferred around the world via the internet. I mean, what country do you think is ahead of the rest when it comes to po positive brain health? What do you, what you, what, uh, from, from your readings, what do you think is the best country out there? Oh, that's a that's a that's a hard that's a hard question to answer. And <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm really qualified to answer it. Um, well, the, I've not really studied how brain health is affected in other countries. I, I, I've but, looked at what goes on here, and I have to tell you, we need to do some real serious looking at who we are and what we do. I've read that many people suffer head traumas and car accidents, but they are underreported. And why do people put up with so many aches and pains? Do you think it's you know? Do you think our medical system is very tough for people to? I mean, did you have a hard time getting in to see your doctor when you were? I mean, did you have a hard time getting uh, help? Or did you? When I was a kid, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, my parents got all the help <laughs> that yeah. I needed. But yeah, your your point is well taken. And uh, unless you have an emergency, you usually have to wait long periods of time for for uh, to see a doctor. But people have a big responsibility for taking care of themselves. Yes. And so they need they, they need to stop putting it off, right? If they have constant problems they need to see a doctor right <laughs> well yeah you, you know uh, you understand your body and your brain better than anybody else yes and um uh diet look go into a grocery store today and two-thirds of the food that's in the grocery store is, is you don't need mm -hmm. and it's not healthy that's right it's, it's high sugar it's very high sugar you have to look at all the grams on sugar is a processed sugar, food it's really high yeah sugar is a mm -hmm. major cause of inflammation yes well, you know, and people are in such despair when there are no answers to their physical ailments. I mean, were you in despair about your ailments when you, after the encephalitis? Oh, I was scared. Yeah. I mean, I was really, they said, well, you know, my memory is bad. Well, it's all right. It's collateral damage. You know, I couldn't talk. They said, well, it's just something from your, from your, from your brain. Well, come on, give me a break. What's going to happen next? <laughs> That's right. What, what, know, what can I do? Am I going to have dementia next? Yeah. And and that and that is apparently rising this dementia problem in our in our society. Do you think what can you do you think uh, we can do to to stop the inc increased numbers of people suffering from that disease? I am going to go on a limb here. Okay. But I used to work with people that had uh, cognitive problems. Uh, I had somebody that, that, that was in the, supposedly the fourth stages of Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. That person went through an exercise program. and I, I worked with that program, person five days a week okay. uh, for quite a while. And this exercise program with this person? Yeah. And what, what kind of... The, the answer to your question is, I believe, I believe that dementia can be prevented. Alzheimer's can be prevented. Really? Yes. I, I don't think anybody needs to have have dementia, Alzheimer's. I think it can be prevented with lifestyle. I think lifestyle is is. is so what? Like so? So give me three steps that the, you know you can do right off the bat. There are three things you should do to prevent Alzheimer's. What, what, what would that? What would the three top things be? Oh, first of all, uh, stay hydrated, exercise and engage in active learning. 
okay. So whether you learn to play a new instrument, whether you learn to uh, learn a new language. Um, learn to cook, learn to sign, learn to paint, learn to do anything. Learn to do anything, okay. But learning is, is the key thing because learning, learning draw, creates memory. It activates the brain, basically, right? It, it draws blood to the brain. Mm -hmm. And it's blood that keeps your brain healthy. Okay. As long as you put the right things in your blood. Oh, my gosh. Now, why is sleep so critical to brain health? Sleep is the time uh, when your brain administers all the, all the information. Information is critical to the survival of the brain. And that's the primary rule of the brain. So, so sleep is the time when the brain takes all the information it's received during the day and sort of sorts it out. Mm -hmm. And then it, it gets rid of information it doesn't, it doesn't need. Uh, or, yeah, 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 I'm sure if you've worked puzzles and stuff, mm -hmm. you know that at night mm -hmm. you, or you, you, you couldn't do something in the morning, you mm -hmm. woke up. You, it, it's also the time when the brain is repairing cells and tissue and mm -hmm. re regenerating generating new cells. Now, well, can the brain do that if you've taken a drug to, to, to go to sleep with? In other words, a lot of people are taking sleeping pills. Or, or, uh, what do you think about that? I'm not a doctor. I know. Uh, what have you read? That you, do, have you read anything that indicates? I, I think taking sleeping pills is the wrong thing to do. I, I think there's many ways that you can help to, 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 relax. Get, get, to relax your brain and get good sleep. Um, if your brain is overactive, mm -hmm. it's going to help. It's going to provide. It's going to prevent you from a good night's sleep. Yes. If your brain is not active enough, you don't need as much sleep. Okay. <laughs> so, well, you know, when people reach a certain age and they think, "Well, gee, I'm going to retire. I'm not going to do this anymore," and and so they sort of. Don't do much. Okay. Well, they don't realize that they're drawing less and less blood to their brain. That means their tissues are getting less and less healthy. Their cells aren't functioning as effectively. It's the wrong thing to do. When you retire from one thing, go on to something else, something new, something fun. Okay, take up a hobby or do take yeah, a... Yeah, sure, yeah. do something, something that's enjoyable and fun. Okay. And, of course, uh, you, you, you mentioned in your book that you... You had, um, you were taking, you tell us about Sudoku and other exercises for the brain. What, what, what is Sudoku? Is that? Sudoku is a logic puzzle. Okay. And I started a group at the Lee Community Center in Arlington, which is still going today. And I started that group in 2008. And um, what, what it is, is you have to fill in the puzzle with numbers and certain, okay. The way they tell you to solve that puzzle is by writing in the possibilities. Okay. The way that I did it was that I did it in my head. Oh. And I wouldn't write a number in. Now, it was a learning process, mm -hmm. and it was a development process. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be able to write a number in until I could solve for that number. Okay. So that, and I didn't really know this. When I was doing this, information wasn't in one place. It was all over the place. So... I did things that I thought were, you know, were, would work. But in the regard to the Sudoku, I just didn't like doing it the way they said, and so I did it my way, and it turned out to be useful. And so, so that's right. You were probably fun to play with. Well, um, now describe your relationship with food and how you changed your eating habits to improve your health. Did you did you start to eat just uh, protein, more protein, or did you uh, did you have a specific diet? Well, for the first thing you want to do is, is you want to get rid of refined wheat products. Refined, okay, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, yeah refined wheat products don't have any nutrition. They mm -hmm. cause you to gain weight. Uh, they're, they're, they're just negative. They're just bad. So don't, don't, don't eat any cereal then, right? I mean, stay away from cereal? Well, no, you have good cereal. Mm -hmm. You want to stay away from sugar-coated cereal. Okay, you want okay. to eat... Mm -hmm. uh, oatmeal is good. Okay. Oat flakes are good. There's a lot of good cereal out there. Okay. And if you read the nutrition label, uh, you can. But um, with regard to me, excuse me, I made water my drink of choice. Yes. Uh, I started to eat a lot more fruits and vegetables. Instead of eating three major meals a day, I would eat small meals throughout the day. Okay. Small, and, and would you stop before, like three or four hours before you go to sleep, or did you just eat all the way through? To... No, I'd stop about three hours before I went to sleep. Okay, okay. 
And now, did you ever, uh, when before you had the serious um, virus problem with with the in the memory problems, had had you ever drank a beer or had a glass of wine or? Did, I'm an alcoholic. You're an alcoholic. Okay. And so then, so therefore, I haven't I haven't had a drink since mid eighties. Okay. Okay, so you just you, and no you, late late eighties, and you so you went through a program to get yourself totally so you would not touch it again. Okay, because you you knew it was not going to work for you. Okay, okay, and um, what about um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is the uh, excuse me here. Um, I read that uh, in I read that you know that doctors in twenty nineteen only have eight minutes with their with their patients, and how can they diagnose properly with such a short time to interview and check their patients? It seems to it seems to me that uh, that, that the patients are not valued um, that the time that doctors spend with their with their patients is not valued by the insurance companies. Have, have you did you have a did you always feel that you were on a rut when you were meeting with your doctors? Did you feel rushed? Did you feel like you had to get out of there quickly? Or I had a very good friend that was a doctor. Mm -hmm. And what you have to look at doctoring is first of all, doctoring is a business. It's mm -hmm. a career. Yes. And so you have to make some choices as about how to how to deal with it. a doctor to make money today has to see about thirty five forty patients a day. That's that's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, uh, you know, I would rather you know doctors today are really fast at prescribing things. Yes, they are. I would rather see doctors helping people with their eating, with their exercising. Yes. Yeah, I would rather I would rather see doctors doing that. Than prescribing medicine, but again, the insurance companies are not gonna, are not going to like that because they they make their money from <laughs> the, the, the 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 prescriptions and the and all the pills that are dispensed. I think. No, I don't know. I think the insurance companies would really like it. I don't know what the what what the financial aspects of it are, but no, they make their money from premiums. Okay. <laughs> and um, I think that the fewer prescriptions they have to pay for and the fewer illnesses that they have to okay, pay for, the happier point. they that's, would be. Okay, that's a good point, good point. In, in your book, you have a, Appendix A, in, in, which is five categories of food you need to eat and drink. And um, so you're, you're, really, you're really big on fresh fruits and vegetables, right? Yes, I am. And, but how much meat would you say? Would you say just fish and chicken? Or how, about, how about red meat? Fish, chicken, and turkey, I think, are, are excellent. Okay, red meat. There's no problem with red meat as long as it's grass-fed, free-range. Okay. The problem with red meat today is the way it's raised. Yes, it's farm-raised and grain-fed, and that's not healthy. Right, right, right. So, and of course, our, our I think that our society has, has become sicker and sicker through the decades. Don't you think? Yes, I do. And uh, so, are you working on another book about this, these problems? <laughs> I'm working on a book called, yes, I am. I'm working on another book. It's called The um, Responsive, Interactive, Comfortable Brain. And it's really kind of an update of that. And um, so will you be self-publishing that one, you think? Or you, you, might, you might put that out to publishers? At this point, I really don't know. Okay. Now, did you have help from, your, uh, from colleagues and relatives in writing this book? Or did you just, how, how, how was your... Uh, how did you start? Did you did you put together a um, an outline before you started writing? Well, first of all, my wife was incredibly helpful with that. And um, did I put together an outline? I just started to write. <laughs> I, I really did. I just started to write, and then I started to organize what I was writing. Mm -hmm. um, I had to be careful that I was writing in the same voice. Mm -hmm. uh, that book, in, in addition to having good, good information, it has a lot of. It's got a good reference material. It's not something you can keep on yourself and referring to. Exactly, exactly. And um, well, I I feel that you know this has been great having you here today to Thank discuss you. your book. And and where can our viewers find your book if they would like to purchase it? Well, they can go to my website, which is NortonSBeckerman.com. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they can they can you know, look at the uh, at, at the book. They, they can read the first two chapters of the book. Actually, oh, that's good. That's yeah. very good. And they can get an idea of, of, of my writing, and then it'll tell them right there. They can purchase it at Amazon or Kindle, and it'll give them a link right to that. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, again, thank you for being a guest on our program. Martin. Thank you for having thank me. You. And thank you for watching. Please join us again next month for a new edition of the Bookman's Corner. I'm Lois Lindstrom.